meeting 6.03 p.m., October 1st, 2024. I call this meeting to Howell Township Council to order. Can you give a statement, please? This meeting is being held in accordance with Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, Open Public Meetings Act. Adequate notice has been provided in the manner prescribed by law. This agenda is complete to the extent known, and formal action will be taken. I'll begin with a roll call. Councilwoman Fisher? Here. Councilman Gager? Here. Councilwoman O'Donnell? Here. Deputy Mayor Nadal? Here. And Mayor Berger is acting. This evening. Is there a reason to go to executive tonight? Yes, there is. We have a litigation update and a contractual negotiation update. Motion to go to an exec. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gager? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadal? Yes. Thank you. Time is 7.07 .07 p.m. <clears throat> October 1st, 2024. Going to reconvene our meeting. I begin with the roll call. Councilman Fisher? Here. Councilman Gager? Here. Councilman O'Donnell? Here. Deputy Mayor Nadal? Here. And Mayor Berger is absent this evening. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and I'm on the sound. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Start with a proclamation for fire prevention room. It's going to be read into the record by Fire Chief Brian Park now. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Right, so, Fire Prevention Month, Fire Prevention Week, uh, whereas the Township of Howell is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting our community, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are the greatest risk from fire. Home fires killed more than 2,700 people in the United States in 2022, according to the National Fire Protection Association and fire departments in the United States responded to 360,000 home fires. And whereas roughly three out of five fire deaths happened in homes with either no smoke alarms or with no, smoke, with no working smoke alarms. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying with reported home fires almost in half. And whereas smoke alarms send smoke well before you can, alerting you to danger in the event of a fire which you may have as little as two minutes to escape safe. Whereas how attached residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room outside each sleeping area, and on every level of their home. How potential residents will make sure their smoke alarms meet the needs of all their family members, including those with sensory and physical disabilities, and whereas, how potential residents should test smoke alarms at least once a month. And whereas, residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be likely to survive a fire. And whereas, how potential first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. Whereas how attached the residents are responsive to public education measures and able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas the 2024 Fire Prevention Week theme, Smoke Alarms Make Them Work For You, serves to remind us of the importance of having working smoke alarms in the home. Now, therefore, the governing body of the attachment of Howell, on behalf of, I do hereby proclaim October 6th through 12th, 2024 is Fire Prevention Week in Howell Township, and urge all residents of Howell Township to make sure their homes have working smoke alarms and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of Howell Township's fire and emergency services. So, um, once again, I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to, to talk a little about fire prevention and fire safety. Um, we hear a lot about fire prevention and fire safety just in the month of October, specifically in the, month, in the first week of October during the designated Fire Prevention Week. Um, but we know that fire safety you know, is an important aspect throughout the entire year, and it should be practiced by everyone, you know, regularly. Um, we hear so many times that smoke alarms save lives, and we still continue to see in the news and in the headlines of a tragedy occurring due to the lack of the presence of working smoke alarms. Um, just by having that simple device, a lot of people do take for granted, not realizing that it, it can change their, and alter the course of, of, uh, of their life, God forbid, their their experience a fire or another similar emergency within their home. So um, I thank you guys for the opportunity to, to present this tonight, to read this into the record. Um, I thank 
the administration, the council, for their efforts and, and their support in my staff and my office in promoting fire prevention um, throughout the year and, and all of our community risk reduction efforts, uh, specifically to our most vulnerable uh, in, our, in our young adolescent and school-age children, as well as to our seniors. Uh, so that, you know, it's important that we get those messages out to them. And uh, we have references, we have resources available to those that may be in need of smoke alarms reach out to my office. Uh, we have programs in place where we can assist you in obtaining uh, the, the smoke alarms if you don't have the means to get one for certain qualifying uh, residents, as well as programs in place to help you install them um, through the Division of Fire Safety, as well as the campaign that we're, we're working on with the, the Red Cross. So um, again, thank you guys for the opportunity, and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Hey, Brian, I, I, I have a question for you. You're the expert. We talk about smoke alarms. It's smoke alarms now. Do you also recommend monoxide and dioxide? So carbon monoxide detectors are, are, should be installed in conjunction with your fire, your smoke alarm. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, smoke, carbon monoxide detectors are required for any, you know, dwelling that has a fuel burning appliance. You know? mm -hmm. um, they recommend to be installed in the area of the sleeping rooms. I can tell you right now, personally, I have one at every level of my home because that's all my fuel burning appliances are the attic, in your basement, in your in your kitchen areas, in your locker room. So, um, you know, the more the merrier, right? So, but yeah. So, in, in conjunction with smoke alarms, you should have working carbon monoxide detection as well, <laughs> and they should be tested regularly. Once a month, we should be testing all of our detectors to make sure they're functioning and sounding um, because they make different sounds. Some people aren't familiar with what those sounds mean. Um, a huge campaign during the pandemic was um, to learn the sounds of fire safety because when everybody was doing virtual learning, in the background of everybody's virtual learning were the chirps and smoke alarms. Wow. So there was another aspect of what do those sounds mean and what are they telling us? Now, a little maintenance goes a long way to protect your family um, from the events of the fire. So it's important. Yeah, we take it for granted. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they're annoyance and, uh, you know, it, always, it, it never fails. It's always three in the mornings when they go off. Never, never in the afternoon, but again, you know, a little maintenance, a little proactiveness will go a long way to, to protect you, everybody in the home. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. The only chirp in the middle of the night. We have this moment. So, move on to acceptance of minutes. September 17th, 2024, regular executive session. I'll make a motion. I'm sorry to accept um, September regular and executive session minutes. Have a second. Second. Councilman Fisher. Yes. Councilman Gaysher. Yes. Councilman O'Donnell. Yes. Deputy Mayor Dow. Yes. Thank you. Report to the township officials. Mr. Clark. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I have a few announcements. So, Howell Township Recycling Center, in cooperation with Monmouth County, will host a tire drop-off for Howell Township residents only. Tires must be uh, 18 inches or less and without rims. Resident ID is required and the limit is four car tires. Program starts today and will run approximately two weeks. The Howell Township Recycling Center is open Tuesday through Sunday, 7.30 a.m. through 3 p.m. And you can contact our DPW for more information. Um, our Fall Fest and Optimist Club of Howell annual car show is coming up. October 19th at Oak Glen. We have live music uh, from the Eddie Testa Band, food trucks, uh, beer and wine from the Howell PBA. Uh, we have some new fire pits that we've been itching to try out, so we'll have them. There's going to be rides and a pie baking contest. So anybody who might want to join the pie baking contest, we have the entry form online. Uh, fill it out. We have Three categories, apple, classic, pumpkin uh, for the fall, and just the regular fruit pie, blueberry, whatever, cherry. Um, and that will be on the same day as Fall Fest, and we will have some of our governing body as judges. Halloween decorating contest, October 22nd through the 27th. Uh, entry forms are available at Town Hall or online. Uh, we've had a great turnout the past few years, so we're looking forward to that again. Turkey Trot's coming up November 17th. This is our third year, I think, now. So uh, registration or the check-in at the race will be at uh, 8 a.m. The race starts at 9. 
And if you go to the township website, you will see where you can sign up. I would read it, but it's pretty long. But basically, it's runsignup.com, and then you can kind of search for Howell in there. Um, and that is it for my updates. Just one note for landlords in town. Um, we've obviously been having a lot of rental issues. So one of the ordinances we passed this year was to require an annual CO inspection uh, for the rental certificate as opposed to just a change of tenancy or ownership. Um, the idea is that uh, there's a lot of work being done in homes without permits. There's a lot of occupancy issues. Um, and they're in the interest of public health and safety, we're going to start doing inspections every year. This is about the season. October, November is when everyone starts sending in landlord registrations. And we have to process 1,400 of those in short order. Um, right now, don't submit any of your landlord registrations. My office is going to be reaching out in bunches throughout the year. Um, so ultimately, you're going to get a pass this fall from your landlord registration. We're going to get a couple hundred rentals every month in the system. Then we'll do a combined landlord registration and rental cert application, which will carry the inspection requirement. And we're going to do it all in one shot. But we're doing them in bunches throughout the year. Um, so no need to re-register like you're um, used to. Um, so just a little PSA for the landlords. Thanks. Any legal updates? No. <laughs> Office. Uh, yes, the last day to register to vote is Tuesday, October 15th. Right. I'd like to open up the floor for a hearing of citizens and public comments. Each person shall first give their name and address to the clerk. The council should be addressed as a collective body and not as individual members. Each person shall have one turn to address the council and comments shall not exceed total of five minutes. Speakers shall be notified when their time has run and no time extensions shall be permitted. Would anyone like to come up? Seeing none, we have a motion to close public comment. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, information and comments by elected officials. Uh. I just had one question. Matt, I, I have a question for you. I should have brought it up in the back. You know, recently we had a couple places that you caught doing work. I mean, serious work without anything. Uh, what happened to, with them? I know you, sh you shut them down. But like, what? Yeah, it depends on the nature. Um, each one could be a little different. If this is just an owner doing significant work and we either get a complaint or we come across it, um, building department will go out as well as code enforcement. Um, so building department can issue uh, uniform construction code violations. So they'll issue a stop work order, violations and penalties, depending on if they're doing electrical work, plumbing work, building, um, anything that triggers the fire code as well. So all of that will be looked at by the building department. Um, code enforcement will also go out if there's any zoning issues or code enforcement, if it's, a, if it's being used as a rental. Immediately there will be summonses for occupancy without, um, if, if it is being occupied, occupancy without a rental CO, occupancy without a landlord registration. Um, if it's not a rental and there's still zoning issues, maybe uh, bedrooms being added or something that triggers the zoning ordinance as well, we'll issue violations for that. Um, then the UCC stop work order um, stands until it's lifted, until they come in with submission of plans, permits uh, are issued, uh, then they can start work again. What happens uh, to the, all the work they did prior to that? It has to, it has to be inspected. Um, and if they've done so much that some of it's enclosed, they'll have to take down drywall and show us what was done. Okay. Go on. If, if I may. Um, I just want to congratulate um, and thank the township, C. Fetcher, DPW, for the uh, great success that Holiday was. I mean, I might be biased, but I feel like it was probably one of the best ones ever. The food trucks were busy. The lines were long. That's a good thing. Um, the kids, the children on the rides, the, the music, the live bands, just the weather was perfect. Just it was a great day. So thank you to all. Don't forget the fire bureau for fireworks. Yeah, the fire bureau, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I will just just very quickly. It's everybody has come together on this, and I know you know Brian's been busy with the fireworks, but I think that's an awesome addition. Early, you know, on Stephen was sort of tasked with almost the impossible, um, and he really has come through in a big way. And you're right, DPW, the PD, everybody has really pitched in and made it great. And there's more to come, and we are looking to kind of 
get Stephen some help. So we'll be talking to you guys behind the scene about that. And, uh, yeah, Fall Fest is going to be a fantastic event. And just keep you guys open for one or two things in the winter. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a coordination, but Stephen is just really stepped up for you. I mean, I also have something, um, Deputy Mayor. Um, uh, Mr. Clark, I understand that this time of year, election time, uh, sometimes things may be in the public that may not be totally correct. Uh, maybe they're misunderstood or they're put on the different websites. And so I thought that it might be a good thing to ensure that all the residents have the accurate information because certainly how Township residents deserve the truth. So if you would indulge me in some of the questions that I have, if you'd be kind enough to answer them publicly. So the, uh, one of the things that uh, has come to light that I would like to make sure that we know the, you know, the actual uh, steps in truth is the Victory Road. So the application, uh, the original application on Victory Road uh, was for a solar farm. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So <clears throat> it was brought before the zoning board and it was denied. Uh, they needed a variance and did not get it. Is that correct? That, that's correct. It was uh, correct. Solar farm was proposed, uh, needed a variance, and it was subsequently di denied by the zoning board. Okay. So then some of the residents, including Betty Lou Gimble, opposed the solar farm. And is that correct? That is correct. There was opposition to the solar farm, um, and during the pendency of that application, not just the objectors, but the township and everybody else who happened to be watching that particular application was notified that if the solar farm wasn't put in, if it wasn't approved, that they would pivot to a permitted use, which at the time was a warehouse, and they had a fully conforming application ready to present Okay. So even before that the deal were, the uh, deal occurred, or the denial and the deal was occurring, um, and while the solar application was pending, the applicant stated that if the solar field was denied, that he would bring forth a fully um, conforming application for the warehouse. Is that correct? That, that's correct. That's what was said. Okay. I want to just be totally clear and accurate, so bear with me. So the application was deemed by the zoning board. Um, it was correct in the application and then denied, correct? The solar farm application was denied, that's correct. Okay. So most recently, the planning board, I'm sorry, so most recently the planning board unanimously deemed that the warehouse application was correct. Is that now correct? So most recently, uh, as promised, when the solar farm application was denied, the applicant came forward with a fully conforming application for a warehouse on site. Um, the planning board heard a lot of testimony. There was objector's testimony given. And ultimately, the application was voted upon recently and unanimously denied. Correct. So the warehouse application was denied. So at this point in time, would it be your opinion that the applicant is likely um, to sue the planning board? I would almost guarantee it. I mean, I, I think that that's a, almost a foregone conclusion based on the application being denied, sure. So the law, now that law set, so it will cost the taxpayers money. And um, I would assume I would be correct in that assumption? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, assuming that the planning board is named, it's, it comes out of the planning board budget. So, yeah, it will be taxpayer money being spent on the defense. Is there a chance that the planning board could... 
could lose the case if that if that did so, go to fruition. So, so let me see if I, I just to make sure I understand. The, could the if the so the planning board will go to court, they lose the case, and could then there be an approved warehouse on site? Yes, there could be. So one of the alternatives would be that. Okay. And then um, going along with that, so if that's being done, how do we well then how do we address the warehouse at that point? So well, at that point, so if there's a court order of approval, then we're sort of without recourse, right? Because it's so right now what we're trying to do is negotiate a resolution with the developer ahead of time. Right now, everybody's sort of in a state of flux. There's uncertainty surrounding the nature of the application. Um, I can't get into it too much, even though I'm not the attorney on this anymore. Um, everybody's kind of doing the behind-the-scenes scoring. What's the likelihood of success? What's it look like? We have talked to the developer mm -hmm. previously about a purchase of the property. We're still going to explore that. So it's costly, and one of the ways we're looking to defray the cost, and I will say this now because there was a vote on the application, um, we're looking to put solar on it and to generate revenue as a result of that, which would help defray the cost of the township purchasing it for the period that the solar installation would be there. Um, we're also exploring other opportunities in terms of financing it so that the taxpayers aren't saddled with you know, a huge burden in terms of that. But, yeah, we're looking to get rid of a warehouse and to get open space for the town and to do it in a way that's fiscally prudent. All right. So then we come up at that point now, I think we're about in 2022. So then we, we undertook the uh, master plan. It was completed. And we passed a number of ordinances. Right, so, so this, I think this goes to, so this is sort of what happened with other warehouses previously, um, you know, prior to back when Monmouth Commerce was sort of still a thing. We did a master plan reexamination. Um, we had originally tried to ban warehouses in the town. Um, we got to the point where the ordinance had been introduced but not adopted. The night of the adoption, we had not too many residents show up uh, in support of the ban. Uh, I think it was three or four. And there was an army of lawyers who did show up uh, to oppose the ban. So at that point, we decided that, um, you know, discretion is probably the better part of valor, and we would reexamine the master plan and see if there was a way that we could deal with the warehouses um, without subjecting ourselves to costly litigation that we would, again, it would be an open issue if we were able to win it. So we had our plan, we do a master plan reexamination. From there, we passed a suite of ordinances that address things like the proper zones for warehouses, uh, the types, so that we don't have what everybody thinks of as these Amazon-type distribution centers where you know, cars in, cars out, um, and the size. So that's that's where we are currently in terms of dealing with the warehouses. Um, I can tell you in terms of the warehouse applications that have been approved and that may be the subject of litigation currently, we are talking to that developer as well um, about developments other than warehouses. Uh, we shared a little bit in executive session tonight. We're not ready to discuss it in public, but it's a pivot off of the warehouse and onto potentially some other type of development. So we're looking to deal with the situation as best we can. Okay. All right. And further with Victory Road, in 2023, um, we looked at the zones again, and for Victory Road, uh, that particular parcel, we then changed it to ARE6. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And so that would bring us to the present. 
<laughs> As mentioned, uh, we are seeking to purchase the Victory Road parcel and then exploring, you know, that uh, placement for the solar, as you had just stated. All right. Um, Correct. So, so there's a, a fair number of moving parts with the solar, but uh, we think we've found a partner on it. Um, you know, we've got a couple of other points to negotiate with them, and that's going to be Caitlin's wheelhouse. So, yeah, I can't I can't go into too much detail on that. Okay, so we are in talk with other developers, and we're trying our best to come up with a formula that will, uh, well, we're trying to see what the developers, what their opinions are, and also what's available other than warehouses. Course, so correct. we are trying to deviate to something um, that we would feel be substantial to the town as a whole. So the talks are moving on, and um, I anticipate that there's going to be continuing talks and hopefully we will be in a better situation other than simply just the warehouse. So another topic that has been um, discussed uh, during this season especially, which is uh, probably expected as it's typically called the silly season, are the farm ordinances. So specifically, the proposal of allowing farms to hold special events and I'd like to uh, clarify some of the issues that have come up along the way. Sure. I'll try and answer as best I can. Matt's probably a little more conversant in some of it than I am, so we'll ping-pong it back and forth, depending. That's fine. I just want to get to the bottom. Okay. Um, and so then isn't it true that you and the others, uh, we had several meetings in the past year especially, to work on a plan to make... Um, this happened where the farms could have special events and other events that would be applicable to their properties. Yeah, that's correct. We've been in discussion with a few property, property owners looking to do this probably even more than a year. I mean, we've really started working on ordinances in the past, about a year ago now. Um, but master plan talks started, you know, a couple years before that uh, in the same round as the warehouse changes that uh, Manager Clark just mentioned. So it's been a topic on our mind for a while. Okay. Uh, I became familiar mostly because I'm a farmland preservation, so around last October, November, I became involved, That's hoping to expedite or at least, um, you know, carry the information back and forth. So I'm really dealing with the time period that I've experienced mostly. So um, anyway, one of the issues that was discussed as to whether or not the farmers, uh, I'm sorry, would need site plan approval uh, from the planning board. Is that correct? Yeah, our position has always been that this is a commercial use. Um, we could tie it to farming, and we're, we're trying to do that. I know that's not always been the view um, from the people that want to do it, um, but it's a commercial use inviting the public onto the property. So for the interest of public health and safety, we've always deemed that site plan approval is applicable, um, even oh, over time that we've established that the regulations call for that. And even more so, when we've talked to some more towns more recently that are getting into this a bit more, then it's not inconsistent. Site plan is definitely being pushed um, around our area as the requirement. So it, it, it seemed to me as we went along this process that administration was trying to make it simple and to specifically fit different size farms and to meet the uh, opinion that came down originally that preserved farms could hold special events. So do you think that based on what we've done in the past year that we've pressed or put any undue and unnecessary pain and suffering on those that were trying to, in fact, protect and the health and the quality of life and the no. safety for our residents and how? I definitely don't think we've done that. And I, would, I don't think any of, us, any of us would be doing our jobs if we did. Um, it's a complex matter. Land use law doesn't catch up to these trends. There's a lot of trends out there, uh, a bunch on farms specifically that 
isn't necessarily consistent with the farming 20 years ago and our right to farm ordinance or, or the general farming activities that we're used to. Um, municipal land use law catches up slow, zoning catches up slow, ordinances are slow. Um, we've churned out three different versions of ordinances in a year. Um, it's taken a lot of work, a lot of input from the public, uh, and we've really made great strides. We tried to do it early on with a number of 30 people per guest, but it was our idea in the, in the first place to try and do an administrative approval to avoid the site plan for the small sites, the small parties that we could, you know, feel comfortable with approving. Um, obviously, that was met with a lot of opposition. Um, we wish that maybe we had passed those ordinances so that we could have had a year's under our belt, your year's worth of experience. Um, but here we are. We're not there yet. Uh, we hope to get there soon, though. So, uh, for the, and especially the meetings that I've attended, so I'm speaking to this uh, firsthand, um, the former representatives that did come to these meetings um, including Mrs. Gimble, had opposed uh, nearly every proposal that was set forth, and uh, especially there was the one proposal that was set forth could have been in place uh, last December, I believe, would have been the second reading for the smaller group gatherings, and that was not um, met with open arms. Uh, and the objective against safety health, well-being, quality of life, or how. So it was uh, put down by the uh, representatives, and is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, again, we had 30 people in our first number. We were comfortable with that, with that site plan. Obviously, that number wanted to be higher. Um, we, we started with presentations in this very room about the right to farm laws and all the different overlapping regulations, and we could never kind of um, – get on the same page in terms of what the township was willing to accept in terms of liability uh, and, and our responsibility to oversee um, either through site plan or inspections or what, what have you. Um, we were never able to get on the same page. We tried to do some general ordinances. We didn't want to include things like on-farm direct marketing, which is a different ball of wax. We knew it was. We didn't want to kind of get too granular, um, but we had to after a while. Um, you know, instead of trying to, you know, generally approve something and see how it works. We really had to dig in on the details and understand the regulations, and none of them are built for what is wanting to be done here, um, whether it's your preserved SOE, special occasion event, through the state on preserved farms. It still requires municipal approval. Right to Farm doesn't cover these activities. Right to Farm covers something totally different but similar. Um, it's just incredibly complex. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, avoidance of responsibility in the regulations, and it is all flowing down to the township. And like I said before, we haven't been able to get on the same page to just say how important that is and how we need to stick to our guns in terms of saying site plan approval is needed. We need to make sure these are safe. So is it your opinion that the right to farm was never in the crosshairs? It was never a disregarded right to farm has always been steadfast in, in this in this township. Absolutely. So we have two right to farms to consider, the state right to farm and the township right to farm. Township right to farm, chapter 244 in the, the ordinance, you can read it yourself. It covers your farming activities, protects farmers from complaints on dust, noise, um, related to insecticide and pesticide use, um, and it's everything for your agricultural output of your farm in terms of retail and wholesale. That's what it covers. Um, and it kind of goes through a bunch of different uh, items in there. But it doesn't extend beyond your retailing the products you produce from your farm. So you go to the state, um, and I sat through AMP, Agricultural Management Practice, hearings several years ago where they confirmed weddings, milestone events, and birthday parties are not right to farm activities. There's clearly a void there, and the void is we're trying to fill it with ordinances instead of just saying, forget it, you have to go for use variants. Um, and then in terms of the other right to farm activities, we're following the guidance that the state puts out and the county in saying that municipal approvals come first. Again, there's a gap there where it's clear everything's flowing down to the municipality. The county and the state want you to start at the town, get your approval, whether you need relief or whether you need something different in that, that approval, that's when Right to Farm is there for you. Not a lot of people understand that. They think if they qualify in their minds that it's an automatic uh, approval, that it's automatic coverage. It doesn't work that way. Um, and we're trying to get that message out. So at this point, everything that's been proposed in the past year has been totally rejected, and at this point we don't have anything that's really standing firm in terms of any of the ordinances at this point. 
Is that correct? I think we have some firm ordinances. I think they're good ordinances that we can work off of and gain some experience. Right now, those are being challenged for mediation, and we can't talk about that publicly. Right. So we haven't passed anything, though. We're, we're working towards that goal. Um, and just to make a broader point about all of this, and this sort of goes to what Councilwoman Fisher had said about the township events. They're, these are they're great events. That we want the farms to hold these. I mean, it, it brings Howell, you know, it brings people to Howell. It, it helps elevate the township in the eyes of Monmouth County. So why wouldn't we want them? Every farm should be having these events, but just like we need to follow certain rules when we hold our own events, we have that same expectation on the farms, and that's the point that we're trying to get to. And so when we're sort of challenged at every turn as either overly draconian or that we don't understand what we're talking about or that we're just outright wrong, when we have consulted with the state and we have consulted with the county and they have confirmed the correctness of our position, it gets a little bit frustrating. Um, and we are anxious and in a hurry, as I know all of you are, and to get these farms up and running so that people can come to Howell and see just how great it is here. So, All right, so of all the things that were introduced, nothing's been acceptable. And by way of this, when we've introduced something, um, now we have other businesses that are questioning um, the purview of what's being asked or not being asked of farms that was asked of them. So in a sense, now we're looking, now we have some uh, issue with uh, being unfair to some of the existing businesses. Um, to the larger, well, do you feel that that's a fair assessment? Yeah, we, we've received the one um, formal objection to some of the ordinances we put out that they weren't too overly um, permitting in terms of uh, too many guests and not enough oversight in the sense that we weren't doing our due diligence. Uh, and due diligence, uh, by that I mean your site plan review, um, the buffering, the stormwater management, the landscaping, everything that's so important in our ordinance that our boards do not like to grant variances to, we were not giving a fair opportunity for those boards to hear the applications, and we weren't giving a fair opportunity to the other businesses that did have to do that. There was one formal objection to that, but those ordinances didn't go unnoticed in the community, in, in the overall Howell community, because um, other people are starting, we're starting to see that how lax we were being on one side. Um, meanwhile, all those things are applicable for every other commercial business, every other uh, zoning board and planning board application, and um, trying to carve out such a such a hole didn't go unnoticed. Okay. So after all of this, now we've returned back to the drawing board, and we're actually uh, practically, well, we are starting over because we have to now introduce ordinances that uh, will be acceptable uh, to meet state statute, federal statute, our uh, ordinances with business, other businesses in town, and something that is suitable to the group of farmers that have been involved in this process. So... Right now, we have introduced ordinances. They've been tabled um, while we're in mediation. We're talking with our professionals. We've had several meetings so far. We have some more to go um, to address some of the issues that are being brought up in mediation. Hopefully, there won't be a wholesale change to the ordinances, but it's too early to tell. Yeah, and just to key off of that, so obviously, we're the Garden State, right? Farming and farms hold a special place in New Jersey. Um, and they are given special protections, and we're trying to work within the confines of that while also protecting health, safety, and welfare. Um, you know, obviously, we can't let one suffer for the benefit of the other, and it's a delicate balance. So at this point, we still have, now we have the group appealing. Uh, as you said, now we're in mediation. So now we're, the appeal went to the state. So now we are basically stagnated and going further. Is that correct? Yeah, we're, we're sort of, yeah, we're, we're not moving them forward. We haven't been able to get them on the agenda. We're working with our professionals 
um, to try and address the concerns that were articulated. Um, so but we're really trying to address this. We're really trying to avoid litigation on the matter. Um, it's expensive for the taxpayer. We just talked about litigation just a few minutes ago on another subject. There was threats of litigation on these ordinances, the different versions, and we don't want to do that. Um, we really want to work with um, the community and get this right the first time um, or the fourth time, wherever we are. Uh, but uh, we're trying to avoid undo unduly uh, taxing the taxpayer further. And I do have another uh, question. So when I go to these meetings as a preservation, primary preservation task force member, and we we merge both groups, I say wait, we're, they're meeting both groups together really for the sake of getting the information out quickly, and also sometimes one of the committees hinges upon what the next committee would like to do, or it, the information flows much better when everybody's in the same room. But um, from the farm farmer's uh, perspective in the group, who would actually be uh, leading this charge? Because I don't see it being the chairperson of the committee on the civilian side, not administratively. I mean, well, we have the Farmers Advisory Committee, um, so it, it should be the chairman, um, and it should be that should be the conduit for information to the governing body. Should be. Okay. I just thought that Mrs. Gimble was sort of taking the lead on much of this in terms of the ordinances. I, I mean, we've had several residents and several farmers speak out. Yes, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Gimble has been one. Um, we have a few members of the farming community within the mediation session as well. Um, yeah. It's because we really need to move. I know you agree. I know you understand, but. We need to move all of this forward because now we have things that cannot be done by farms by way of um, the mediation process that's in place and other things. So I hope that the next year brings together some more open minds and that um, when we bring forth an ordinance as we did last year for one of the group of farmers that could have had a certain amount of people do a certain parties, um, the amount was not what the group as a whole wanted, but the farm that was actually this was not designed for, but designed around because they were the ones that actually had a certain amount of people that they were looking to do. So they were denied any ordinance. So in the past year, they'd been able to do nothing. So it's unfair to some of the groups of people. Um, you know, if it's four or five ordinances, then it should be dealt with really individually, and I don't think that anyone or any one group should be formulating, you know, one thought process and keeping any one group from getting further ahead. So hopefully that mindset uh, will change and we'll be able to move forward. And I'm hoping that um, the information that's given out in the future is accurate and timely and and I have, I felt that administrative has, administration's been uh, very forthright. And sometimes when things aren't popular, they're met with great resistance. But we have to look at the greater, the greater good. And every ordinance, farming, any ordinance, you know, the health, the welfare, and the quality of life for how, is always in the forefront. So while we have to deal with the state, we also have to remember that our Main thrust and our responsibility is the entire town. So that's very, very important. Um, there's also the matter of the uh, COs and the continuing ex inspections. And I know that the deputy mayor has been working with you uh, closely on a lot of these meetings. So um, could you give an update on something or uh, what's happened in the most recent past you know, so that everybody's aware of where we are? Well, I was just going to touch on this. Uh when you're finished. Um, so ordinance number 41 that's going to be introduced tonight. Uh, this goes back to, I think last year that we had a resident speaking during open comment saying how a lot of these rentals with the new homeowners are committing mortgage fraud, insurance fraud. Didn't really know how to go after them, especially being a township. We cannot enforce federal law here. Um, recently, about a week or two ago, another resident approached me 
and inform me that these mortgage agreements where residents are buying houses as their primary residence, that is all public information, they're all legal documents that are posted on the county website. Most of these, when you're buying it as your primary residence, is there's a requirement that says that you have to live there within 60 days for a minimum period of one year. We are having some of these houses that are accessible by public record that are applying for COs long before that period even hits. So <clears throat> by so this new ordinance will now require them to give us permission from the mortgage company granting these landlords permission to rent it out during the period that they agreed upon that they would be moving in as residents. So we don't want to be complicit in any of the fraud because if something happens and the mortgage company says you were renting this out without permission, insurance may not pay out, then they could come and say, hey, the town gave us a rental CEO, you know, we're going to be on the hook. So moving forward, once it's hopefully adopted at our next meeting, if a house has a mortgage and you're trying to rent it out, you have to provide proof from the mortgage company that that's going to be permitted. Simple as that. So it's it, it's a legal agreement that these home buyers are signing up for, possibly due to better rates, better insurance rates. Investment properties have higher interest rates if they want to buy it for the purpose of a rental. So buying it, claiming that's your primary residence and you're going to rent that out, it's not going to happen anymore here, and you're not going to get your rental CEO. And if, again, code enforcement's been working hard, and I thank you guys for getting this ordinance on the agenda tonight. I know it was very recent that we came up with this, so it's good to get this moving. If Matt needs more help there, uh, hopefully we can figure something out. We're, we're looking at exactly that, but I, I will say this was this is a great one. I, I think this is going to be really helpful, and just like you said, nobody's getting a CO unless we get permission from the mortgage or telling us that it's okay for it to be a rental. It's, I think it just makes it very easy um, for us now to take a look at it and say, it's exactly like you said, we're, we have to deal with the rentals. So, and again, it'll stop the new ones from coming in committing this fraud, and we're also going to start going back to our roles and cross-checking all the records. Yep. So, all right. On that note, we'll go on to the consent agenda items. Uh, does anyone want to pull anything to vote separately? All right. We have a motion to vote for R24352 through R24364. I'll make a motion. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Uh, yes. Deputy Mayor O'Neill? Yes. Thank you. Consent resolution is passed. Resolutions to be voted separately, R24-365. I have a motion. Motion to accept resolution R24-365. I'll second the motion to accept. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Adele? Yes. Thank you. The resolution passes. Resolution R24-366. I have a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes, Deputy Mayor Nadeau. Yes. Thank you. The consent, or excuse me, the resolution passes. Going to unfinished business, public hearing, adoption of ordinances, Ordinance 24-36, Ordinance Amending Chapter 7-14 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Powell to prohibit certain vehicles from parking in public parking lots. The public hearing on this ordinance is now open. Anyone wish to comment, please come up. Seeing none, motion to close public. Motion to close public. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adopt Ordinance 24-36. I'll make a motion to adopt 24-36. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadell? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 24-37, Ordinance Amending Chapter 7 or the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell to prohibit parking of inoperable vehicles on public streets. Public hearing is now open. Anyone wish to comment, please come up. Seeing none, we have motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 24-37. I make a motion to adopt Ordinance 24-37. Second the motion. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadell? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted.
Ordinance 24-38, Ordinance Amending Chapter 7-3 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell to prohibit certain vehicles from parking on public streets or township-owned properties. Public hearing is open. Anyone wish to come? Please come up. Seeing none, we have a motion to close public. Motion to close public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a motion to adopt Ordinance 24-38. I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance uh, 24-38. Is there a second? A second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Mandel? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 24-39, Ordinance Amending Chapter 220 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell to prohibit camping and sleeping in public streets and on public property. Public hearing is now open. Anyone wish to comment? Please come up. Seeing none, we have a motion to close public. Motion to close public. Second. All in favor? Aye. We have a motion to adopt Ordinance 24-39. Motion, motion, motion to adopt Ordinance 24-39. Second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadell? Yes. Thank you. The ordinance is adopted. Introduction of ordinances. Ordinance 2440. Capital ordinance providing for recreation improvements to Oakland Park and appropriating $330,000, therefore authorized in and by the Township of Powell in the County of Monmouth, New Jersey. I have a motion to introduce. Motion to introduce ordinance 24 40. I'll second that motion. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman O'Donnell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadell? Yes. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 24-41, Ordinance of the Township of Powell, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 178 of the Township Code entitled Housing Code Rental Property. We have a motion to introduce the ordinance. I'll make a motion to Second. introduce. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman Nadal? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadal? Yes. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 24-42, Ordinance authorizing traffic enforcement upon real property located at 90 Central <laughs> Court. In accordance with the request of the property owner, we have a motion to introduce. I'll make a motion to introduce. Second. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysher? Yes. Councilman Nadal? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadal? Yes. The ordinance is properly introduced. Ordinance 24-43, ordinance authorizing traffic enforcement upon real property located at 96 Industrial Court in accordance with the request of the property owner. We have a motion to introduce. Motion to introduce ordinance 24-43. A second. Councilman Fisher? Yes. Councilman Gaysha? Yes. Councilman Nadal? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nadal? Yes. The ordinance is properly introduced. The next regularly scheduled council meeting will take place on October 15th, 2024. Executive session begins at 6. Regular session will begin at 7. Is there any further business before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Yes, I'd just like to repeat or uh, to remind everyone that the PBA is having their October Fest this Saturday at the Girl Scout camp uh, location on Yellowbrook Road. So tickets are available. Um, possibly you could buy them at the door as well, but I would double-check that on their flyer. Always a great time. Seeing no further business, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. One favor. Aye. Aye.